Welcome, welcome, shalom. God bless you. We are here again today to come and spend some time with you, to fellowship with you. My name is Reverend Dr. Abel Dube, giving you the power word from Power and Praise Ministries. We believe in the word of God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We believe in developing people and changing lives. We hope you'll be blessed today as we share the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. We also thank God for this opportunity to be in this medium, this uh, uh, TV station, which is an inspiration from God and it's a great gift from God and God is using this channel. So always tune in and spread the message for your friends and relatives to tune in all over the world to hear the word of God. We're going to get our text from the word of God, Joshua 14, verse 12. My message is conquering giants conquering giants. Now the Bible reads, Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me. I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Glory to God. Give me this mountain. Glory to God. That is the word for today. If you want to conquer giants, there's some things that must happen to you. Before you take your place in destiny, there are giants that you must conquer. Before you take your position in society or before you take a position in this life, there are giants that you must move out of the way. You need to exercise faith and say, I will do it. Faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. It is the evidence of things which are not seen. So you exercise faith and say, I will do it. Before you take any lead in life, you must conquer giants. There are giants that must be conquered. Many times we see people in high places and we think maybe they got there by chance. Nothing comes by chance. There must be a conquering. That must happen. Now, what do you do or what does it mean to conquer giants? Maybe we'll go through some few keys here which I noted down. Number one, what does it mean to conquer giants? It means overcome by force. Not because you want to, not because they helped you to, but you overcome by force. Now, let's read in the book of Matthew. Matthew 11 verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent one took it by force. The kingdom of God suffered violence. You must say, I overcome by force. Anything that you want to achieve, you need to put a forceful weight on it. You conquer by overcoming by force. The kingdom of God suffered violence from the day of John the Baptist. Even until now, the kingdom of God suffered. But the violent one took it by force. That means there must be something in you which is so forceful that says, I cannot fail. I will make it, I cannot fail. I have the Holy Spirit in me, I cannot fail. I'm a child of God, I cannot fail. If my God cannot fail, I cannot fail. So you need to take opportunities by force. You need to take Challenges, attack challenges or tackle challenges using forceful means. And what are those forceful means? Prayer is forceful. Faith is using force. You need to exercise that conquering by force. Number two, what does it mean to conquer? It means to defeat by determination. To at last your opposition by determination. That means I'm determined that although there's an opposition, but I will at last them. I'm determined I'm going to go, go on. I'm determined this thing will work. I'm determined this thing will work. I remember a uh, few years ago, I think that was three years or four years ago, uh, when the, the, the founder of this TV station, the Elevate, he came with a concept. It looked like, what is he talking about? What is this? 
But you could see deep down in him, there was determination. <laughs> that, you know what, I am determined, I'll go on. Nobody knew that Corona was going to lead everybody to his vision. <laughs> everybody was led to his vision. <laughs> because everybody is on the cell phone now, and everybody is on the social media now, and everybody is preaching the gospel on there when that it is conquering defeat by determination. Many came and they said, you guys will not make it. I remember I was the chairman of the board that time. You, you try to talk to people, they'll say, no, 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 you guys will not make it. No, data is expensive and all that. But when you are determined, you will overcome. Glory to God. Outlasting your opposition by determination. If you are determined, you are going to have a solution. What are you determined to do today? What are you determined to achieve? If you are determined, God will provide a solution. Those who made it didn't make it by chance. Like I say, that things don't happen by chance. They made it by determination. They made it by being determined that I will do it. Even ministry cannot be successful by chance. It is successful by determination. A business is successful by determination. Even a family is successful by determination. If you are determined that I'm going to take care of my kids and I'm going to love my children, I'm going to love my wife or I'm going to love my husband, I'm going to love my home, you are determined. Even if challenges come, you are determined this thing must be successful and it shall be successful. What does it mean to conquer? It means to subdue by strategy. Engage mentality and arrest opposition. People of God, this thing on inside here, God did not give it to us so that you can go around telling people that we have it. This thing which is called brains or thinking capacity, you need to utilize it. You need to engage mentality and arrest opposition. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about strategic thinking. Don't just think. Think strategically. God has given us the brain to think strategically. Yes, we come to church, or we go to church, or we open up uh, uh, channels and we listen to messages, but while you are listening, be thinking strategically. David was a man who was able to to subdue by strategy. You overcame Goliath by strategy. Why am I saying that? Goliath was a big giant. When he looked at everyone, he looked at small people. Everyone was afraid of him, including King Saul, was afraid of him. He was insulting everybody. But when David looked at him, he saw an uncircumcised Philistine. What did he do? He observed Goliath until he mastered that his forehead was not protected. <laughs> he was a big giant. There's no stone which can bring him down. There was no uh, uh, sword which can br bring him down. But he observed him strategically. He says, okay, if I try the legs, he might not go down. If I try the hands, if I try to say, but there is a forehead there, the forehead is not protected. If I go straight for the forehead, I'll bring him down. I subdue by strategy. Now, subduing by strategy is a content of your mind that determines the attention you command. The content in your mind. What is the content in your mind? That will determine uh, the attention that you command. Nobody wants to listen to people who are empty. Nobody wants to take strategies from people who, who, who are not doing anything. Now, content in your mind. That means we need to fill our mind with things which are of value. Don't fill your mind with empty things. Don't fill your mind with empty stories. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody today uh, 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 today, uh, this morning when I came home, he was saying, ah, yesterday, did you watch this program? I think it's somewhere on the, on the DSTV channel or something, yeah. 
I said, no, 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 no. I removed all those things from my house. I don't watch those kind of rubbish in my house. Although I called it rubbish deliberately. Maybe to other people it's not rubbish, but it's not I'm, I'm not a person who like to be following up stories and soapy stories. I need something that challenges my, my thinking capacity. I said, no, I removed it and I don't want my children to be watching such kind of things. My children must watch things which are of value. They must engage their mentality when they are facing challenges. And how do they do that? That means the, the content which they put in their mind is what is going to determine the attention that they command. When I read my Bible, I put content into my mind so that I can command a, a, an attention. That's why when I speak to a situation, I'm speaking with an authority of command. And that one, that situation must give in, must give way, because I'm speaking with authority of command. I've invested and I've put a lot in my content or in my mind. Now, to conquer giants of your career, you must also have a strategy. Have a strategy. Yes, I'm into the music industry. Everybody is singing, but then have a strategy. How am I going to approach the situation? I mean, the Bible is a, is a good book. It teaches us all things. It teaches us all things. Conquering giants, you must have a strategy. Conquering your career, giants in your career, you must have a strategy. The journey to the promised land was challenged by giants. And they overcame. The journey to your promised land, yourself, sitting there in your home, sitting there in your car, in your office, the journey even to your promotion will be challenged by giants. Moses, the journey, his journey was challenged by giants. He met up with giants along the way. Red Sea was a giant to Moses. Burning bush was like a giant. Right inside, uh, 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 in the wilderness, there were many giants in there. Caleb went in uh, to spy the land. When they came back, they said, we saw giants. They were telling, but, but they were determined. Their determination, we are going to conquer giants. We are going to go. David himself, the man of war, is known as the man with the blood in his hands. David conquered many giants. Goliath was one of the giants. Amalekites were the giants. Jebus, all sides which you find in the Bible, they were giants which fought David. But David was determined that I am ready to conquer giants. Now, if you are not ready for giants, you are not ready for the promised land. As a believer, you must be ready for giants. Even right now, we are facing a giant, an invisible giant. And we must be determined that we will conquer the giant. But we must engage our mentality in conquering the giant. We cannot just run passively, but we engage our mentality in conquering this giant. That's when wisdom comes in. People of God, there is no vacant land in this world. There's no vacant uh, land. Every land is occupied by a giant. It can be invisible, but somebody has got authority over that land. There is no vacant land. Or maybe should I say, there is no vacant promised land. Any promise that you have been given, there is a giant that you must conquer in there. God will give you a promise, but you will not remove giants for you. For you. You must go there and remove giants for yourself. There is no promised future that will not be contested by giants. Every future will be contested by giants. You want to be a successful businessman, businessman, you must meet up and conquer your giants. You want to be a successful preacher, you must conquer giants. You want to be a successful father, you must conquer giants. You want to be a successful mother, woman, you must be able to conquer giants. There is no promised future 
where there is no contestation of giants. Until the giants are confronted, you will not capture the promised land. So you conquer your giants by having a determination that I will make it in life. I will take the promised land. Number four, what does it mean to conquer? It means to obtain by overriding effort. You have to override by aggression. Fight fire for fire. Satan visits those who flee from him. That's what he does. He visits those who flee from him. But if you confront him, he's not going to visit you. Because you're confronting a giant. But if you're running away from him, he visits you. Fear is an enemy. But let me tell you something. Satan is afraid of those who conquer him. Satan is afraid of those who confront him. Satan is afraid of those who confront him. Who confront his ways. Who confront him face to face. That's why I say fight fire for fire. Glory to God. Now, the line of the tribe of Judah, who happens to be Jesus, has given you his nature. He says, fight a good fight of faith. Fight a good fight. That means there is a fight that we need to fight in this life. So don't live without revelation that there are fights that we need to fight. The Bible says, fight a good fight of faith. One thing about this fight is called a good fight. So it's going to be a good fight, not a bad fight, but a good fight. It's called a fight of faith. Glory to God. And number five, what does it mean to conquer giants? It's to prevail by persistence. Anything that cannot be subdued will subdue you. Anything that cannot be subdued will subdue you. Glory to God. But you need to subdue things. You need to make things give way to you. Conquering by persistence. Never give up. Continue. Stay on. Endure. Endurance is the key. You need to endure in that journey. Don't give up. Don't give in. Endure. Now, maybe let's talk about what is a giant before we close. A giant is a conspiracy. Come, a coming together of a conspiracy. That which stands on your way when you are going forward. That which blocks you from going forward. It is a giant. It is a conspiracy. The Bible says they shall gather, but it's not by me. Whosoever gathers against you shall fall for your sake. That's a giant. Just because the battle lasts long, does not mean that you have lost the battle. Conspiracy. There are many of us who are sitting and we have backed down to conspiracy. We have backed down to that which is standing on our way to move forward. If you see your life stagnant, that means there's a giant which is standing on your way. You need to fight a good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Fight a good fight of faith. Laying hold of eternal life. Yes, the Berkeley might look like it's lasting long, but that doesn't mean that the Berkeley is lost. It means we are persisting and we are moving forward. And persist. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Persist. Be consistent. Persist. Be consistent. Very soon, victory will be certain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who is facing challenges, fear not, for there is nothing to fear about. God is giving you power to conquer giants. If he gave the strength to David, he will give it to you. He gave strength to Moses, he will give it to you. Even Paul himself was given strength to conquer giants. He overcame his giants. He overcame his giants. And he became one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. Conquer your giants. And when you conquer your giants, you are validating the existence of Jesus Christ. When giants defeat us, it's like Jesus never existed. But when we overcome obstacles, we are validating the existence of Jesus Christ. 
If there is ever, ever going to be any evidence that Jesus ever existed, it is evident because you overcome giants. Glory to God. So I want you today to pray and ask God, say, Lord, give me strength to overcome giants. Not only just strength, but Lord, as I engage, let me engage my mentality to overcome the giants. Joshua was able, Joshua was able to say, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. The Anakim were giants. They were giants. Anakim were strange kind of characters. Very big. But these guys were able to say, give me this mountain. I don't care whether they are Anakims. I'm not worried if there are giants in there. But Lord, I will take the city. Because the Lord is with me. I shall be able to drive them out. As the Lord has said. God has given you a promise that you are a more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Go and face your giants and overcome your giants. Fear not, for there is nothing to fear about. As a believer, you need to live a life which is above a normal person who is not a believer. There must be a distinction between those who worship God and those who do not worship God. You have got God on your side. And if you are with God on your side, you cannot fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the abilities of Father to conquer our giants. We are going to overcome by force, Lord. Thank you for giving us strength to overcome and defeat by determination. We thank you, Father, that you are going to give us power to subdue by strategy, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that, Father, we are going to, op to overcome by op overriding efforts in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to have overriding efforts. Give us that power, that strength, Father, to have overriding efforts, O oh God. And we thank you, Father, for that spirit of persistence that we are going to defeat giants with the spirit of persistence in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Continue to believe in that word. Continue to uh, 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 follow Jesus Christ all the way. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the one who gives you strength. Follow us again on this channel uh, as we continue coming at the scheduled time. God loves you. We love you. We say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. My name is Reverend Abel Dube from Power and Praise Ministries. Shalom.